I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. There's a departure in the late night world. Roy Wood Jr. is leaving The Daily Show after eight years. The correspondent and comedian says it's time to move on, but he says he's looking forward to finding ways to collaborate with Paramount and Comedy Central in the future. He hasn't revealed what he plans to do next. Some people thought he would replace Trevor Noah as host when Noah left the job in December. Taylor Swift seems to be everywhere right now, on stage, at NFL games, and now her Eras Tour documentary is pulling in millions in ticket sales. Taylor Swift The Eras Tour has racked up more than $100 million in worldwide ticket sales. The concert film will take fans inside the Eras experience with never-before-seen videos, moments, and more from Swift's tour. The film will open at 8,500 theaters in some 100 countries. It is spooky season, and the new Prime Video movie Totally Killer is stirring up excitement with a fan event ahead of the premiere with director Nanachka Khan. She watched the film, took questions from fans, and even took an epic photo with everyone wearing masks. Totally Killer stars Kiernan Shipka as she comes across a masked killer. It's streaming now on Prime Video. It's been 25 years since the brutal murder of Matthew Shepard in Wyoming. His killing sparked a national outcry and the LGBTQ plus community descended upon his town of Laramie to show that his death would not be in vain. Now Shepard's story is being told in a new special called The Matthew Shepard Story, An American Hate Crime. His close friend, Romaine Patterson, spoke with me and remembered their last conversation. She says it shows how Shepard was meant to change the world. Hi, welcome Romaine Patterson, activist and radio personality. Thank you for being here with me today to talk about, uh, you know, there's a new show out uh, on Discovery about Matthew Shepard and it's been 25 years since that horrific event. So I appreciate you being here to speak with me today. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, at first, I want to ask you a little bit about there is this discovery special about Matthew and the legacy of what happened. And you were his very close friend. And would you talk about why it's a good time? I mean, not just the 25 years, but a good time to have a reminder of what happened in 1998. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the biggest reason to want to talk about Matthew Shepard right now is what we have seen over the last few yeah. years, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen a dramatic shift in uh, hate crimes against LGBTQ people. We've seen uh, a lot of rhetoric that has been used to demean LGBTQ people. And this was similar to the kind of environment we had back in 1998 when Matthew died. You know, there was a lot of that rhetoric. There was a lot of those issues that were being used as wedge issues in, in uh, politics at the time. And so, you know, while we're looking at that right now, we're going into the 2024 elections. We're seeing a lot of the same type of behaviors and things being said. And so it serves as a reminder that we have been here before yeah. and if we continue down this path we will see things like what happened to matthew happen again mm -hmm. and you know we cannot afford to slide back into history those were not great times for our community mm -hmm. and we really we need to push forward we really need to be aware and we need to be talking about these issues i wonder if you wouldn't mind, could you paint a little bit of a picture of what it was like as a queer person in Wyoming in 1998? And of course, you know, there was uh, also the horrific story of Brandon Tina, which happened in Nebraska, you mm -hmm. know, around the same time, uh, you know, in that maybe a, a little bit earlier, but it was in the 90s. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about what that was like for you. So I grew up in Wyoming and I came out as a teenager in Wyoming, mm -hmm. which was at the time, literally insane uh because i was in high school the only openly gay student in a high school in the entire state of wyoming uh that's how few of us were out uh so almost everybody back then in 1998 uh who was living in wyoming for the most part most of them most of the gay people were closeted uh not because they necessarily wanted to be but because of necessity there was still uh, this thought that if you came out that you would be targeted for discrimination or people would bully you, which is very true uh, and definitely did happen. There were small pockets 
of gay community uh, happenings in certain towns in Wyoming, uh, but they were very, very small pockets and the support system just wasn't there the way that it is, I mean, more so now. Um, so yeah, it was very challenging, I think, to be an openly gay person back then. And, uh, you know, I did it because I really didn't know any better. <laughs> If I'm being really honest, that's the yeah. truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I paid some very heavy prices for coming out uh, as young as I did. And, um, you know, obviously those us coming out and what happened with Matthew really started to change things about uh, how people came out in Wyoming and why they came out. Uh, there became a real realization that if we stayed hidden in the closet forever, that we wouldn't be able to change hearts and minds of our neighbors and the people around us. And that became more and more important, I think, after mm -hmm. Matthew died. Yeah, thank you. And then would you share a little bit about, you know, in the aftermath of his murder, how the community came together and how some allies stepped up as well and what that felt like for you. So after Matthew died, there was there were a lot of interesting things happening while he was still in the hospital, while he was still alive. We were starting to see uh, as the world's attention focused in on what was happening in Laramie and in Wyoming, we started to see that people actually really cared about the fate of Matthew. And as that happened, uh, it definitely lent uh, for there to be some interesting allies, right? Some people that would come together that otherwise might not have. Um, for me, you know, I'm probably most well known for Angel Action, which was an yeah. angel protest that we did um, against Fred Phelps in the Westboro Baptist Church. And, you know, for us, it was a group of college age students that came together, put on these angel wings and really just wanted to show the world the difference between people who were loving and kind and people who were full of hate, like the Westboro Baptist Church and what that looked like in very stark, easy to see way. Right. And so we weren't all gay. Not every student that was wearing angel wings was gay. We had community members there. We had students there that were straight. Uh, and we all kind of came together because there was this uh, commonality that we had, which is we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to make sure that this didn't happen to anyone else. We saw that at the University of Wyoming when they had their homecoming parade in 1998 after Matthew died. And literally the whole town showed up and joined the parade behind the banner for Matthew. So, you know, it what it said to those of us who were out and those of us who were gay is, you know, this horrible thing happened and we know it's a horrible thing, but there are good people here who want to be supportive, who want to lend a helping hand to this community if we would let them in. And I think we had to make ourselves a little vulnerable to do that. We are thinking about 1998 and, you know, the legacy of what happened to Matthew, I wonder, would you share what you would like people to know about him? Sure. So my favorite thing to talk about when it comes to Matthew is the last phone call I had with him. So we had this amazing phone call about 48 hours before his attack. It was in the middle of the night. He called me out of the blue. And we had this crazy conversation where we talked about all of his ambitions and his goals and what he wanted to do with his life. And I remember him telling me he really wanted to make the world a better place. He wanted to have a positive impact on the world. He wanted to change it for the better. He thought he was going to do that by possibly becoming a diplomat or something like that. He was going to go into government. And I remember I laughed at him. I actually was like, okay, sure, you're going to change the world. I can't wait to see that. And I kind of made fun of him. And I look back on it now and I couldn't have been more wrong because yeah. Matthew changed the world more in his death than he probably ever could have in his life. But ultimately, he, as one person, completely changed the world. Yeah. He inspired me as one person to dress up as an angel and change the world for the better. And I think that if there's one thing I can tell people out there yeah. is that as one person, you as one person, can change the world for the better. Mm -hmm. And it just goes by living by a positive example. It goes by being a part of your community and getting involved. It really isn't that hard to make a huge impact on the people and the world around you. And don't for a second think you can't change the world because I promise you that you can. Yeah. You can watch the Advocate Channel Live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate Channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. 
Thank you for watching.